Hello and welcome back to my channel, Psychology Demystified, with me, Dr. Karen. Today I'm going to be starting off with some of the parts that I said I was going to address during my channel. And this is um, addressing your comments, your questions. And one of the things that I decided to answer today, because it kind of went in a very sequential manner with what we've been talking about therapy and trying to demystify what therapy is, one of the questions I got was, what are some things that you have heard about therapy that you would like clients or potential clients to understand as being untrue or as misconceptions? I'm going to make this short and sweet and launch into the most common ones and hopefully try and address them in the best way that I can. The first one I'm going to try and clear up is the statement that all therapy is the same. Many people go to therapy for different reasons. Everyone has their reasons. Either you're dealing with a mental health issue or you simply want to discover who you are. I've heard many times that people have said that all therapy is the same, so why do I need to go? Well, there may be a few familiar elements in every therapy session that you go to, which are the things that Dr. Michelle and I addressed, which are that, yes, you must sign a, an informed consent, your confidentiality is key. Those ones would be the same. But one thing you have to know is that even between two people, two therapists who have gone to the same class, same school, and graduated in the same year, even though they learned in the same way, there are very many different things that make them different. The personality. If I learn something, let's say I'm Dr. A and Dr. B. Dr. A and Dr. B are in the same class, but their personality is very different. Dr. A is bubbly and lively and that's just who she is. And Dr. B is serious and always very professional. That's going to be the same way the sessions are going to be. If you want someone who is always going to be serious and more professional or, well, they're always going to be both professional, but very to the point all the time, then go for Dr. B because he will, he or she will do therapy, um, in the same manner as Dr. A, it's just that Dr. A will still be the same lively personality that he or she was when they were in school. So you have to see that your personality meshes. That's what makes therapy different. Um, there are very many variables. Their expertise also matters. And remember, as we've said even in the videos before, just because someone has done therapy for longer doesn't necessarily mean that they are better. They just have to gel with you. Remember, it's a relationship. Um, you will also change, so your therapy may also change. Because if you go for therapy over the course of a couple of months, a couple of years, you as a person change, so the course of your therapy should change because you are the one who guides the course of therapy. There's some people who say, just talking about my problems is not gonna change anything, nothing's changing. On the surface, this could be considered as true, but psychotherapy, even though it's healing through talk, isn't just talking. Um, therapists, psychotherapists, psychologists, there are many terms for us guys, are trained in the art of language. We are trained to keep your goals in mind at all times. We are, we have intentional discussions with you. And if you're in therapy, therapy and it seems like you're just talking, then you may not be detecting where this carefully crafted conversation by the therapist is going. But that's not your job. It's our job. It's our job to carefully craft it. It's our job to help you uh, brainstorm solutions and come up with your own ideas, not to give you advice. And if you notice that your therapy is effortless and that you feel like you're just talking to a buddy, then that means you made a good therapeutic bond. Acknowledge that and cherish that. Because once you make that bond, it's like a great relationship. If you can talk to someone, then go with it, go with the flow. Um, it's important for you to feel this way, to feel like it's effortless because that helps you open up more and helps you discover who you are more and helps you come to your solutions in a very effortless, seamless, less tiring, less taxing way. So it's not just talking. It may seem like it, but it's not. A lot of people say, I already have a good support system. Why do I need a therapist? My family is there. My friends are there. Why do I need to come to a therapist? Friends will listen. Family listens. They all do. And they're great listeners. But you have to keep in mind that someone who's trained to listen, is it's an art. There's an art of listening that's there. There's 
an art to the way we help you solve your problems. There's an art to the way we're non-judgmental and unbiased in the way we talk to you. So that's the difference between us and family. Family will give you advice and solutions. We help you come to your own solutions. Because when you take ownership of it, you're more likely to stick with it if it's a goal. You're more likely to see it to fruition. You're more likely to enjoy it more and to feel more like you've achieved more if it's all up to you. And perhaps your loved one is a therapist, but now your loved one technically should not be your therapist because that's a dual relationship. It's the same way a doctor is not supposed to treat his own family or her own family. Same thing. It's very hard to be unbiased when someone's related to you. So try as much as you can, even if you know you have a support system. If you need someone to give you an unbiased um, view into your own life, then seek, seek the help of a professional. Because even though your family listens very well, they're not trained in the art of listening. So I'm not negating that the fact that they listen to you because it's great that they do. But always keep in mind that you need another resource, such as a therapist, if you're dealing with something that's larger than what your family can help you with. This one is the one that makes me cringe. Um, it's where people say, yeah, but therapy is for people who are nuts. It's cringeworthy because it's not. And as much as I enjoy a movie with psychotherapists in it, I think movies have skewed who we are. We seem like we are people who are trying to find the crazy in you. And that's not what we do. That's not what a psychotherapist does. There are very many high-functioning people who seek therapy. They are not crazy. You may be a high-functioning individual who just needs a little extra look into who you are. That doesn't make you crazy. Um, so I know, and a lot of people, yes, there are people who seek it because they have severe mental issues, but there are people who also seek it because they don't have severe mental issues, but they just want to figure out where they're going. So I would like to really just kick this one out as much as I can. And I know this is, this is the most common one where someone says that they're going to see a therapist and I was like, yeah, but you're not nuts. We don't just deal with people who have mental health issues. I dislike highly dislike the word crazy or nuts or I, there's so many derogatory terms that I just make me cringe um yeah there's no it's not black and white we we don't just deal with people with severe mental issues we deal with people who are also trying to figure out who they are so therapy is for you therapy is for everyone therapy is for me as well and I am a high functioning person so if I can go to therapy then I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I'll proudly admit that I go to therapy. There's also a belief that therapists tell people what to do. Therapists do not tell people what to do. A good, skilled psychotherapist, psychologist, therapist, clinician, whatever term you want to use for us, will not give you advice and should not. And note I use the word good. Because as Dr. Michelle and I have said in the past, there are people who jump into the profession and are quacks and they will happily give you advice and that's not how it's done. Our job as your therapist is to collaborate with you and to help you find ways to make a decision for yourself so that you don't have to come to depend on us to be able to guide you through challenging situations. You learn how to handle them on your own. So a good, skilled, ethical psychotherapist does not tell you what to do. This one's a big one, but I'm gonna be forced to take medicine. No, popping pills and dousing you in medication is not something that is a priority and the first thing that's thought of. This is usually the last resort when it comes to treatment. And there are different types of mental health professionals. And if you're thinking they're going to be prescribed medication, the only people who can prescribe medication are psychiatrists because they have an MD. So um, talk therapy is provided by psychologists and social workers and counselors. 
that all those terminologies are based on the kind of degree you hold. Um, now, depending on what problem you have, a psychiatrist may indeed become a helpful part of your journey if it's deemed possible, if it's deemed necessary, uh, but it's not the with all and end all. It's not the number one thing. Or you walk in and in the first day we diagnose you with a disorder and then prescribe something for you. So please do not listen to that one. Different people have medications for different things. Uh, if it's necessary for you, then yes, that will be the course of therapy, but it won't be a surprise. It'll be, you'll be taught, people will talk to you through it. They'll help you figure out how to use the medication to help you um, be the best that you can be but it's not the number one thing. So if you have concerns about medication, um, just feel encouraged to share these concerns with your therapist. Explore them when you're going into therapy. Talk about them. Ask as many questions because when, you're, when you take ownership of your own health, then it becomes something that you're not as scared of. Those are the main ones that I have heard um, based on your question. I hope the question has been fully answered. There may be many others, but those are the ones that keep recurring over and over again. Oh yeah, there's one more. There's that one and um, you meet someone for the first time and you say, they ask you what you do and you say, I'm a psychologist. And they say, oh my gosh, that means you're reading my mind. Um, no, that's a psychic. I do not have psychic powers because if I could read someone's mind, there are very many sessions that would have been a lot shorter than they have been. So no, that power is not there. And it's, I promise, I'm not hiding it. It's not a secret. So that's it. That's all, folks. Um, please don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm hoping that my subscribership, if that's a word, grows this year. Um, thank you for all the YouTube love. And check me out on Instagram with my maybe six photos or videos now. I'm, I'm learning. It's a slow process but I'm getting there. So thanks for the support. See you later. Bye.